Texas Republican Senator Ted Cruz traveled to Sutherland Springs today. He calls the shooting a peculiar evil, the work of a depraved madman. He joins us now live tonight. Thank you for making it back in to talk with us. How are folks doing down there? Uh, they're, they're hurting. They're hurting badly. I, I spent the whole day in, in Sutherland Springs, and, and I've never seen anything like this. Uh, this, this was the face of evil. Uh, this monster walked down the aisle of the church and executed every single person he saw, shooting men, women, children in the head, executing them, mm -hmm. uh, shooting children as young as 18 months. Mm -hmm. I, I was at the crime scene, <sighs> bullets everywhere, blood everywhere, people hiding under the pews. And I spent a lot of the day visiting with the families, visiting with law enforcement that's dealing with, with the aftermath of this crime, but visiting with the family, visiting with Pastor Pomeroy, whose, whose church it was, and his wife. They, they lost the, their 14-year-old daughter. Uh, visiting with families at the hospital, uh, visiting with victims uh, who were shot by this madman. I've spent a lot of years in law enforcement dealing with some terrible crimes. This is unlike anything I've ever seen in my life. I mean, Texas has been through so much. I mean, Houston uh, devastated in the surrounding areas by Harvey. I mean, just the pictures were devastating and heartbreaking. Now this, um, I got to say, though, the folks down there, there are so many heroes. They seem so resilient and so um, talking about their faith and how they find strength in that. I think of uh, the Stephen Wilford, yes. the guy who initially yeah. engaged uh, the suspect. Um, to hear him tell his story, he didn't yeah. think twice. My understanding is he didn't even have shoes on. He got his gun out of the safe and he ran out there without thought of his own life. So, so, so I spoke with him this afternoon, um, and that's exactly right. He lives about a block away from the church. He, he heard the shooting was happening. He, he grabbed his own rifle and he sprinted there barefoot, didn't take time to put on shoes. And, and he sheltered behind a vehicle. I was standing at that vehicle today and, and exchanged fire with the shooter and shot him. And, and the shooter fired back. The home behind him, there are bullet holes in the windows and the walls. And, and I talked with a lot of law enforcement agents today, both Texas DPS agents, Texas Rangers, FBI. Every single law enforcement agent I asked about it said that had Mr. Williford not stepped up and engaged, and shot this shooter that, that a lot more people would have been killed, that he would have, he, he was, he, he was still on a rampage and this could very easily have ended with a lot of law enforcement losing their life and potentially a lot more victims. And, and I'll tell you, Mr. Williford is not someone who wants attention. Mm -hmm. he, the, the, the media is putting a lot of attention on him, but you know, one thing he said when I talked to him, he said he was, he said he was scared out of his mind. And I said, sir, courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is, courage is acting in the face of fear. And I just said, thank you. Thank you for the lives you saved. We may never know who's still alive because you were willing to risk your own life to stop a deranged lunatic madman who was, who was set on, on mass murder. Some things we learned from the Air Force this afternoon about the suspect. He had a 2012 conviction yep. on domestic violence issues, 2014 a bad conduct discharge. Uh, the information they say, if it had been properly entered, would have stopped him from these multiple gun purchases. The Air Force says uh, the info didn't get in, uh, entered. They've got the Inspector General of the Air Force now looking into this. How concerned are you that this is an issue? I, I am deeply concerned. And, and, and Shannon, I'll tell you, as I was flying back from Texas to D.C. this evening. I was getting, to be honest, more and more angry sitting on the plane because this should have been stopped beforehand. Under federal law, it was illegal for this individual to purchase a firearm. He had a conviction for a crime that's punishable by more than a year in prison, and he had a conviction for multiple domestic violence crimes. Both of those, it's already ineligible. But several things happened. Number one, the Air Force, the Obama administration, didn't report those convictions to the NCIS database. That's an endemic problem. It's a problem with the federal government. It's a problem with the states. And so when he went in to buy the guns, they ran the background check, and they didn't find it because it wasn't in the database. 
But I'll tell you, we could have prevented this in 2013 in the, in the wake of Sandy Hook. I joined with Chuck Grassley. We introduced legislation that was called the grassley Cruz legislation. And it was aggressive legislation targeting felons and violent criminals to stop them from getting guns. There were a couple elements of that legislation that were critical. One, it mandated that federal agencies, including the Air Force, report to the NCIS because that was a problem back then. But two, and this is an even more critical piece, if it had been reported to the background, to the background database, when he went into academy to buy this, this, the, the, these weapons, he lied on the forms. That is a felony to lie on those forms. The Obama administration didn't prosecute those cases. In 2010, 48,000 felons and fugitives lied and illegally tried to purchase guns. They prosecuted only 44 of them. And, and that becomes a big part of this argument because people want more gun control laws, but if we're not enforcing the ones we have now, that's a big issue. And let me draw a quick distinction. Quickly, because we Gun control sorry, for felons and fugitives, yes. For individual citizens, law-abiding citizens, no. And the Democrats filibustered the legislation that would have resulted in this shooter being in federal prison instead of murdering those innocents in that Texas church. So many unanswered questions and missed places to have potentially stopped this. Well, um, thank Senator, you for the prayers of so many Americans, and, and, and Texans are so grateful for it. Yeah, and thank you for sharing the stories of those you met with today as well. It's good to see you tonight. Good to see you.